Hello and welcome back dear friends, it's me Odo. I'm back in my campaign of um, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Last time we cleared the market square, yay, after I think 20 episodes or something like that. We already did it. This was a really tough map. Um, yeah. Now there are some some more things to do. In the Blackwing library, we can find um, the, the, the um, what's his name? The storyteller. Uh, in the Tiefling hideout, we have a uh, um, the Wulchif quest and in Defender's Heart we can celebrate with the friends of Sina. So let's go to Defender's Heart, do this and then do the Tiefling hideout next. How about that? Let's travel there. It's just one hour. And that's it. The absence of an answer is an answer to. The absence of a question is a question to. Is it? Hmm. <laughs> We are also nearly depleted of spells already again. I mean, this is this is strange. This is really terrible. Let's go to the tavern and let's sell some stuff first. So let's do the same thing as last time. So, bulk selling, this stuff, plus, I mean, ah, why do you do this all the time? <sighs> Let's keep it. Should we keep the, yeah, we keep the cold iron spare. What's that? A great club? Yeah, let's get rid of it. Ah, uh, it's not possible to do an enter. Masterwork dagger, yeah, whatever. What's that? Masterwork glaive, set it. Hunching daggers, set it. Throwing eggs, hmm. Nah, yeah, let's set it. Press plate, get rid of this. Okay. Stuff. I mean, do we really need all this stuff? <laughs> when can we. <laughs> Scroll of blindness, interesting. What we have. Piece of the holy symbol. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. A journal about an experiment. Experiment day one. Oh my god. So long. <laughs> okay. Uh, today I was able to catch a Irori be with my witness. It wasn't easy, considering my humble physical condition. Luckily, it was a scroll specimen, about seven pounds, with a wingspan of about two and one third, one third feet. When it evoked the Kazit, first tried to attack me and then ruined my clothes with his caustic saliva. Experiment day three. 
I have begun my linguistic research. My goal is to study the language of Quasits. I am quite convinced they have their own dialect. Through understanding their speech, I will be able to understand their way of thinking and convince them to rebel against their lord's tyranny. A revolution will roll through the abyss and powerless will rebel against their oppressors. I am sure that Everbloom Milani will not refuse her patronage even to such creatures as these if they would break their chains of slavery. Unfortunately, progress is thus far insignificant. I have been able to catalogue only two words, which I suspect must mean rent and carrion. The Quasit formed both words quite vividly when commenting on my person. While I was entering this record, the Quasit managed to steal my watch and throw it into the chamber pot. Judging by his spiteful giggling, he's quite delighted about his little joke. And despite the naughty trick, I'm somewhat glad. Jokes and pranks are a part of cognitive communication which I fully intend Establish with the specimen. I grow more, more and more convinced that I made the right decision in leaving Absalom and Foray Logos, the so called wise house, more like narrow minded fools stuck in the past under the sway of their ringleader, that chatterbox, the fool of fools, should not not trouble. They've never appreciated the progressive nature of my theories. Ah, we hear about Jubilos who we also know from um, Kingmaker. Uh, they've never pre- yeah, experiment day four. Today the Quasit almost bit my nose off while I fed him. In response to my shame, I beat him with a wand. Such behavior towards sentient being is unacceptable, and I repent deeply. I've also run out of meat. Asiman and I will have to make to make do with porridge and soup. Experiment day six. It's been three days since the specimen switched to a vegetarian diet. At first the quasit refused to eat plant based food, but then ate some cabbage soup and poked at the porridge with his claw. His face looked so tragic. <laughs> Experiment day seven. It's like uh, feeding a lion with carrots. <laughs> the specimen has completely lost all signs of aggression. At dawn, I was awoken by the, by his moaning. The quasit was rolled up in a ball in the corner, whimpering. Despite his dangerous appearance, it's quite impossible not to feel compassion towards the poor creature. I had to take prompt measures and give the specimen a laxative potion. The quasit now reacts to me with confusion and fear, but at least it's not suffering anymore. His gastrointestinal tract must have reacted unhappily to the unfamiliar diet. Day 10. What a great day. The switch to a completely plant-based diet is complete. The theory that quasits can only eat meat and carrion has been disproven. My eternal opponent, Sir Chubinov, will just have to go drown himself in the river. The Quasit well, has, became, has, became peaceful, has become peaceful and easygoing. He no longer tries to eat my boots or the feet inside them. The specimen's behavior has become gentle and friendly. He shows some interest in all games and physical exercise. I have named him Packer. Today he initiated he initiated communication and attempted to explain a new word to me. By all evidence, he was making up the word during the communication process, for there has never been such a word in the classic language. The meaning, as I understand it, is safety, comfort, and calm. I see no further need to keep Packer on his chain. This experiment, oh, this could be a, a bad, bad decision. This experiment has convinced me that the vicious and evil traits attributed to Quasits are acquired, are acquired habits not natural or inherent to their nature. Over these days, I really have grown fond of him, and 
By all evidence, Pekka likes me too. He's gotten used to napping on my knee while I'm writing my observations in my journal. Maybe someday this facet will become my familiar. The current stage of the experiment is complete. Pekka and I are soon off to Absalom to present our findings before the professors at Foray Logos and become a scientific sensation. On our way, we may make a small detour to Aviston so that Packer will have a chance to better adapt to civilization. I hope the little trickster enjoys the journey. Okay. Hmm. Fanfare to the faithful and Elor and the spin of nightmares and. Stories told us by spirit, knights with hair. Oh, come on. I can't read them all. Let's sell this stuff. The Fender's heart greets you with unexpected liveliness. Beyond the walls of the tavern, the once bustling and festive city lies in ruins, but somehow none of that can be felt within these walls. The people in the room are talking, laughing, raising toasts, even softly singing. It doesn't... Interesting. My son is talking really loud to himself while learning Latin. <laughs> it doesn't look like typical tavern revelry. But nor is it the grim vigilance of recent days. Sila waves to you. She's sitting at the table with the trio you met previously. The knight, the half-elf, and the red-headed halfling. Slow the part fast. Come. Let me properly introduce you to Elon, Jenna, and Curl, the fearless warriors of the League of the Inspiring Cot. Items lost. Ah, because we sold them <laughs> before we could. You know. Wait, what? <laughs> we have to you know, track silently. We can do. Okay. It was me who convinced Irapath to use what Jenna, Curl, and Elon found for a little party. If you look out the window, you might think the end times have come and the abyss has devoured us all. I thought some simple pleasures, good food and good company, could keep the gloom at bay. Yeah, look at you hesitantly, as if trying to gorge your, gorge your reaction. Good, I understand. We need to continue living and fighting, however hard that might be, even amidst the chaos that has befallen the city or lawful This is safe. What if the demons attack while everyone is drunk? Chaotic? Have I ever turned down merrymaking and good company? Let's raise our mugs, my friends. For evil, I see nothing wrong with making a little profit from this chaos. Uh, shrug silently. We keep neutral, as neutral can be. Hey, are we just going to sit here with grim faces? I say we get to know each other a little better. So, we have better reasons to toast. So, Anna Eldori will not join us because she has no picture. Tell me about you and your, your order, Elon. Also, Elon will not join us. Elon of the Hound Hearts. As stories go, it's not very entertaining. Here I was born far to the south in Andoran. I lost my parents early. Not the life of a simple mercenary, but often questioned the path I had chosen. I'm proud of my sword skills. I enjoy training and drills, and I'm not afraid of battle. But risking my life for coin, it takes a special mindset to choose that lot with no regrets. You have to want to risk your blood. I saw too many of my friends die, and I wondered if it was worth it. So, in the end, I decided to choose another path. Now, if I'm going to lay down my life, at least that will be for a good cause. That's how I ended up in Mendeth. 
What's Mendef? The ascetic nation of Mendef is again defined by its conflict with abyssal forces okay. and became a squire for the hound hearts. It's a small order. By, by tradition, it never has more than 12 members, and a new member is only knighted after one of the elders die. Okay. We patrol the lands along the Woodstone line and provide aid to travelers and settlers. Unfortunately, death is common among the Hound Hearts. I became a full knight two years ago after laying my mentor to rest. But I am content with my choice. My place is among the Crusaders. Have you been surf surfing in the Eagle Watch for long, Jenna? I signed up four days before the demon attack. Am I lucky or what? <laughs> I'm an apprentice of a famous fencing master from Miven. Yeah, we know the Aldoris. From Kingmaker. And I learned a thing or two from him, believe me. I soon got bored of fighting off bandits and getting involved in the petty squabbles of the bickering river kingdoms. I wanted a proper challenge, and you can't find a better place than Mandev. And what do you know? The moment I arrived, the demonic invasion began. My father would say that's no accident. Fate brought me here. What about you, Curl? How did you end up among the condemned? Hmm. Okay, wait. I just did what everyone else was doing. I grew up in the slums. Everyone stole a little, or maybe smuggled or guarded stashes, so... Curl stares into his mug gloomily, but I never killed anybody, and I never did anything really bad. I got caught stealing, and when they made me choose between prison and the condemned, well, of course I didn't want to go to prison. I'm not that the fighter, but as Norgopa is my witness, Norgopa is known as the once mortal god of thievery and assassination. Okay, a thief can also be useful in a war against demons. I've always been a good scout. I can sneak under the nose of any monster, but I don't know where my friends are now. We got separated when the demons rampaged through the city. So also we don't get Curl because he doesn't have a picture. Chin up, friend. Whoever you were in the past, you're our friend now. And the Crusader. Your skills will be useful to us. You'll see. How do all of you know Sila? I met my noble sister on the road to Canabras. I was returning from the south my fiancé, and was happy to be in the company of a paladin of Iomide. We said our farewells at the city gates, and I went north along the road to Dresden, to my other order's camp. Elon's face grows grim at the mention of the camp. The demons attacked us there, at the same time they struck Nabras, but we managed to fight them off. We hurried to the city's aid and joined forces with the Eagle Watch. All my fellow hound hearts were wounded during the battle on the street. I am the last knight of my order who can still fight. It's so good to see Sila again. Every loyal heart counts these days. I met Sila at the tavern in Canabras before the attacks, of course. She was one of the few who would sit at the table with the condemned. Knights usually don't even look at us. But Sila is different. I knew it the moment I saw her. That's what made me notice Sila too. So I sat down to talk to her. I never understood why everyone treated the condemned so horribly. And I still don't. Our oh, curl is a great lad. So after that night, Sila and I went round the taverns together every day. I mean, the city walls run by stupid asshole as Huldrun <laughs> who who tried to burn a young elven kid at the stake. <laughs> I mean this is terrible. 
So probably most of the people were like, mm -hmm. Mendev is an amazing place. Really? I don't think so. People from all over the world come here for glory, redemption, or to help those in trouble. They always find each other. This might be the best place in the world to find like-minded people and friends. That was a toasting case you didn't notice. Sina, did you call me over just because... Or is something the matter? I didn't just want to talk about today's celebration. You see, Elon is in trouble. I want to help him, and I don't know anyone else in the city I can turn to. His fellow knights were all wounded in battle. Okay. Ah, uh, bad idea, sister. I told you. I don't want to bother anyone else with my problems. I need to handle them on my own. Oh, come on. Hiding your sadness from your friends is no way to live. Oh, that's right. Stop about fast. Help me find you. Without this help, I'd still be looking for you all over Canabra. So, Elon, come on. Stop being so stubborn. I'm not <laughs> Let's cut this off. Uh, okay, tell me more. The young knight shakes his head. In all truth, I do not wish to impose. My problems are just minor troubles. A paladin of Iomeda and her friend certainly have more important things to do, especially now that Canabras has been overrun with demons. Well, the marketplace is free now. I've learned anything in life. It's that there's nothing minor about good and evil. Sina begins seriously, but then a smile lights up her face. Take the three of you, for example. It seems like all you did was save one card from some lesser demons. But look how many people are happy now. That feat will never be sung of in songs. But who knows, maybe thanks to this one joyous hour of peace and rest, the defenders of Canabras will find the strength to protect the city. Sila catches her breath. I talk too much, don't I? Well, Sir Elon, I want to help you, and my reputation as a holy warrior of Yomida won't suffer if it's more of a minor adventure than a glorious feat. Okay, all right. I'll explain. The life of a crusader has given me more than just a purpose and a change to serve a righteous cause. When I abandoned the life of a mercenary and became and came to Mendev, I gained something else I never expected. It's here that I met, may all the ladies here forgive me, the finest girl in the world. The miracle she found and she found any love in her own heart for a bungler like me. But I'm not about to let this miracle go. Not even the demon lord Tiskari and all that his demon army can stand in my way. Luckily, my beloved is now safely away from Canabras. For half a year, I've been getting up my courage to propose to her I even ordered a ring from Derek Sunhammer, the best jeweler in Mendev. Independent knightly orders live mostly off the nations, and I'm not what you would call rich. But I so want to make Kiana happy. Now oh, it took me three months to find a jewel the same shade as her eyes, and twice that long to scrape together enough money Master Derek's work was worth. Was worth it. But I lost the ring during the demon attack, really, and I'll probably never find a worthy replacement. The ring is most likely still at the Hound Heart's camp outside the city. Elon and his friends didn't have time to pack up their camp. First the demons ambushed them, and then they rushed off to help Knabras. I think we should at least go there and check. Not right now, of course. But once the situation in the city is under control, what could we run into at this camp? 
My friends and I killed two large demons attacking the camp, then rode straight to the city without spending any more time cleaning up the rest of their band. It was only a few imps, but they might still be at the camp. Of course, this was a while ago. Our camp was attacked at the same time as the wardstone in the main square, and I haven't been back there since. Okay, fine, I will help. Because it's XP. Yeah. Okay. Sila, I hope you can convince Irabeth to let me go with you when you do this. I don't want to be parted from my friends. Of course, if the League of the Inspiring Cart has come together in this dark hour, we must continue onward together. Okay. And we gained 150 XP. Yay. Shall we sleep or shall we go on? Will we have to fight? So. Clerics of Desna have joined the crusade. Yay. We did this. Find the Ranker, yes. More than nothing. Yeah, let's do this next. Now. Let's not sleep. I don't think that we will have to... Um, that we will have to... I mean, I could have looked around if we'd find um, Ramian. He should be here. Okay. Uh, but let's keep her here. Or her here. And take... Amber with us. Hmm. Let's get keep her here. I should have healed before I went out with the with the shaman. Okay, let's move here. One hour. Let's travel there. Okay, random encounter. You failed to sneak past the enemy. Really? And of course he is. Okay, uh... Vulnerability curse. One enemy creature within medium range. Let's make him vulnerable to... Okay, let's see. Vulnerability curse... During which any energy resistance or energy immunities on the target are suppressed. Oh, that's good, I think.
So, suppress vulnerabilities. Let's do notifiable on you. Uh, uh, snowball on you. Oh, there is another one. Oh, come on. This is not nice of you. To kill my dear Nenyo. <laughs> okay, let's do this. But we'll have to go back a bit. Really? You get an attack of opportunity on her? Like, um, can you just oh. okay. Can you just not kill me? Yet? Yeah, because we just died nearly. Don't think that we got enough um, XP for killing these guys. Uh, but on the other hand, um, oh, it's lower in getting right there. Let's end here. <sighs> Why not? Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay. Sister carries my... The basement is dark and dead. Ah, uh, we probably have to fight there. <laughs> Looks not really nice there. And uh, you are immediately struck by it of the gathered things. Five of them are kneeling along the wall separate from the rest. A tall woman, who has been cleaning her fingernails with the tip of a knife, greets you with narrowed eyes. Brother Woolchief, you got my message there. She doesn't seem a friendly guy. 
Sorry, I couldn't swing by sooner, dear sister carries my. It was just one thing after another. First I was in shackles, next, well, no, I was still in shackles. Then I was being watched and then the thief got me out and I came here straight away. I knew you'd been waiting on me. Enough talking. Or else we'll be here all night. So, we had a clear plan. We were going to wait for nightfall, slip into the shop, grab the goods and leave. Even if the neighbors called the guard, there was time to get away. But what happened? The bitch Irabeth showed up almost right away. She knew we'd be there. Somebody betrayed us. And I have a good idea who it was. What do you have to say to that? Make it quick. Do you think Wolchiv knows the name of the traitor? Lawful, the burden of proof lies on the, on the accuser. Wolchiv doesn't have to prove anything. Kinabris is burning. Why are you squabbling here instead of fleeing the city? Well, this is, this is really the best answer because it, it's true. He speaks, I thought Wolchiv only brought you so he have someone to hide behind if things went south. <laughs> he seems a nice person. I'd be glad to leave, like the rest of my brothers and sisters, but in the family there's nothing worse than betrayal, and it's something we do not forgive. We don't forgive anyone who lets traitors off the hook. If I don't find the rat my superiors, let's just say I wish I was burning in Canabras. I want to keep living, so I'm going to take a chance until I find out who is the traitor. There is no one here. No one is leaving. What's there to tell? About a week ago, Sister Carrie's Mike got six of us together in this very basement. Me and those five over there, I mean. Wolchiv turns his head toward the five tieflings kneeling by the wall. She rounds us up and she says we've got a score. Ancient trees and wonders, the one place nobody never, nobody's ever been able to hit. The place that's guarded by a golem. But now, a powerful scroll that would knock out the golem just happened to come into our possession, along with a tip-off that the shop owner would be gone on a particular night. All six of us know a bit of magic, and we know that any enchanted junk will sell for a pretty penny, so we're in. And the most important thing was that none of us was to be hanging about the shop ahead of the job. No casing out the place, no calling attention to ourselves from either the golem or its master. This job was top secret. That's all true so far. Go on. We did everything right. With the locks and the golem, I picked the lock. I remember it clear as day. Sister Delna was on lookout. The Melrum had the scroll. Duffy, Tavi, and Vanya brought the sacks. We covered the windows and lit the torches. I remember scooping up rings and tossing them in a sack, and one right expensive one rolled away from me. I crawled under a table after it, and next thing I know, Irabeth was there. Everybody scampered, but I was still under the table. Not my finest moment. I was going to wait it out. But then those blockheads were dragging me out by my tail and put me in shackles. They took all my rings off me. About 20,000 worth. And to add insult to injury, I never even found the last one. In the end, I got dusted over nothing. So they caught you, poor thing stripped you of your loot and you didn't even manage to stash anything. Where's the moon of the abyss, brother Wolchiff? 
Ah, now we are talking. What is the moon? Uh, it was an amulet. It used to sit on a little cushion in the window of ancient, ancient trees and wonders. Sterling silver sparkled like a star, fine piece of work. On one side, there was a half moon, you know, a crescent and waning moon, and in the middle, there was a dark crystal, like it was eclipsing the moon. Old man Philman was so proud of that amulet. He used to say, I'll never sell it. It's the jewel of my collection. Old Chief sighs unhappily. I used to go there to see what kinds of treasures there were in the world. There's nothing else to look at in Canalpris. People used to claim it was a powerful thing, but who's to say? If you ever saw a thing like that, you'd have the gods on you the second you tried to fence it. Everybody knew that you were always hanging around ancient trees and wonders drooling over the moon of the abyss. Did you think you could swipe it in all the commotion and keep it for yourself? Did you hope that we'd all be locked up and you'd get off scot free and with a fancy trinket to boot? Don't take me for a mug, Wolchiff. I see right through you. took the words right out of my mouth. It doesn't make any sense. If I was the rat, I'd have kissed her on the hand and been long gone by now. You know my, me, sister, I'm a cautious fella, not an idiot. Why would I? Would I go against the family so the fish in the salmon can have a nice wolchief sized dinner? The moon of the abyss is a pretty bauble, to be sure, but it's just an amulet. It ain't worth dying over. You knew Erebeth's people would protect you. You knew you could pin the moon going missing on them. And now you've come here with backup. You knew exactly what I was going to say to you. Only problem is, nobody's returned the amulet to Philman. Are you giving Erebeth a but is that it? Have you seen her? Do you think she'd take a cut of anything I offered her? She can't be bought. She's like three heralds of Eomide all rolled into one. <laughs> he speaks the truth. You'll find some knights who'll take bribes, I'm sorry to say, but Irabeth Tirabe isn't one of them. That's the whole story. Sorry. Sorry, story. <clears throat> Old Chief crosses his arms, looking affronted. Some family this turned out to be. It's just a name in the end. In a real family, people take each other at their word. They don't throw around accusations. I didn't take the moon of the abyss. What am I go gonna do with it? You can't sell it to no crusaders. It's a special item. You can't wear it. It'll get nicked. It's pretty to look at, sure, but it ain't that pretty. If it's that important to you, Sister Carrie's my, I'll find it, and I'll drag the traitor here by his horns, just so as you don't end up at the bottom of the salon. But do you know what you're gonna owe me for that an apology right here in front of everyone you're going to apologize loud and clear so everybody hears it you'll say sorry Wolchiff. you're a good guy and I was wrong about you hmm, he's good he probably took it fine you're one of my people which is why I'm going to give you some time but if you run brother Wolchiff family will get you wherever you go. You'll spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder, tossing and turning at night, fearing poison in every cup and every meal. You'll look into the eyes of every tiefling you meet 
wondering if the families come for you. You'll have no peace. But one day, you'll be tired of running. You'll stop to catch your breath. And that is when we'll get you. Not that. So we are working now for the Mafia. <laughs> you have a way with words, Sister Charismai. A way that almost made me wet myself, but a way nonetheless. Let's go, Chief. We'll go chat to the scary gal Irabeth. She knows you a little. We can ask her who ratted us out. I'll let you do the talking. Uh, yeah, well, this is not worth it. Take a lawful action to, to take the next chaotic thing. We'll find the real traitor. Let's see. And I'll get my apology. Onward to Irabeth. Okay, that's that. This is the reason why we came here. Vanya, Doffy, Melrin, Dalna. And Tabby. And the guy who's selling stuff. Looks like. Tiefling, Tiefling. Cat. Let's see. Can we? Oh, yes. We can loot everything. Collect. Let's take all of that. What's this? And some keys. Lock because it one. Nice. Ooh. There's a door. Leading somewhere else. Hey, if you value your life, you won't even look in this direction. Okay. Can we look in this direction? Hmm, fancy. Pack your bags, brother Wolchiff. We're sending you to the farm. Kill the traitor. At last, brother Wolchiff has revealed his true face. They don't like me. Like him. Hey, Wolchiff, how much did they pay you? So he's the traitor. Okay. So that's that. Really? This is the reason why we came here? Hmm. Okay. My dear friends, we'll stop here. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Until then, bye.